Luma Labs just announced Ray 3 inside of Dream Machine. This new update is the first of its kind to introduce native HDR to AI videos. It's their most powerful model yet with improved fidelity, physics, and prompt adherence which makes its reasoning capabilities way better than before. They've also introduced visual annotations. You can now draw on your image and make it come to life without ever entering a prompt. Now in this video, I'll be diving into Ray 3. I will be comparing it to Ray 2 to see how good it actually is and if their HDR is actually worth it. And we will also take a look at their new reasoning model, which is supposedly better than before at following up your prompt. And lastly, I will show you a few examples of their visual annotations. Now first up, thank you to Luma Labs for sponsoring this video. I will leave a link to them in the description down below so you can try out Ray 3 for yourself. So first, let's go over a few of the new updates inside of Luma Labs. So if you click on getting a new board, then over here on the bottom right, you can switch from Ray 2 to Ray 3 and the Ray 3 reasoning model. I will dive into each new feature in this video, but first of all, Ray 3 reasoning is best for complex tasks. Like it's better for making complex visuals and if you have a lot of things going on, it understands your prompts better and it understands what's going on on the screen. Next up, we have Ray 3. This is good for quality and high motion. Then if you switch up your resolution to 720p, you get access to HDR. And you can also get X to HDR plus AXR. This will give you a different file format, which makes it easier for you to edit and color grade your footage in your favorite color grading platform. For now, important to know HDR and HDR AXR only available if you do 720p and not 1080p. Now all the text to video and image video are native HDR when you start generating them. You can also in the editor, upscale your existing media to give it that HDR look to it. Next up, let's compare Ray 2 to Ray 3 to see how good it actually is. I've got several examples for both text to video and image to video. So let's start off with text to video. So for my prompt, I have this prompt where a guy gets slammed into the wall and then the other guy is following up and he's grabbing him by the collar and he's basically yeeting him upwards. So with Ray 2, I managed to make this example. Unfortunately, he doesn't get slammed into the wall and it doesn't really follow up our prompt. We also have a bit of morphing going on. So overall, Ray 2 just isn't very good. But if we switch over to this example from Ray 3, then you can see he's actually getting slammed into the wall. And then the guy's like, I'm not done with you yet. And then he yeets him upwards and the video cuts off. Honestly, this is quite impressive. Also, if you want to download this, you can see right now you can download this in HDR. This was not possible before, but because they have introduced HDR, you can do so right now. For the next prompt, what I had in mind was a man laying on a train track at night and a train is approaching. Now let's see what happens when we test this out on Luma Ray 2. So this guy, <laughs> he's quite shocked that there is a train passing near him, but like there's no way he's not laying on the train track. So this is just not good enough. I wouldn't use this at all. If we switch over to Ray 3, then we see this guy is panically somewhat waking up. And then he's looking in front of him, but the train is coming from behind him. Then once he realizes it, it's almost like too late before he realized. And then the, the scene cuts off. Honestly, this is quite good. I also like how the train is out of focus and then slowly comes into focus. It looks quite smooth. Let's move over to the examples of image to video. So I got this example right here of a guy sprinting away from something. So basically what I do is I put in my image and then we have this as the first frame. And now you can enter in your prompt and then you can select the model between Ray 3 and Ray 2. So for both these images, I have to prompt a close tracking camera and the man is sprinting away from a huge T-Rex. Now, if I put that inside of Ray 2, then I get this result right here. And all of a sudden a T-Rex appears, but he's not running away from it. It's just like, oh, look at that, there's the T-Rex. 
So that is Ray 2. If we switch over to Ray 3, we see he's actually running, running really, really fast, almost maybe too fast, but we have that T-Rex appearing when he's running out of this scene. So honestly, this already is a lot better than Ray 2 was. Moving on, we got this beautiful image of a Toyota driving through the jungle, and I just love these cars. But my prompt for this one is a truck driving in the Mexico jungle as it runs through puddles of water. So with Ray 2, I got this result. Very slow-mo. We definitely are driving through the puddles, but it looks like he has a ton of different wheel spin going on. Like it is, it is okay-ish. With Ray 3, we got smoother motion and the speed of the scene looks more realistic. I also like that you see like the windshield change with the reflection of the trees that are like next to it. Moving on, let's dive into ray tree reasoning. Now the way this works is for more advanced scenes. So for example, I got this image of a surgeon and the surgeon is doing an operation while someone gives him a scalpel and a pair of scissors. Now, these are two different details that we're gonna have in the scene. So if I place in my prompt, a nurse passes both a scalpel and a pair of scissors, then I would like to switch to ray tree reasoning because it can automatically detect like, oh, I didn't even include scissors here. So I have to regenerate the scene. Like that will do it for you. Instead of you doing another regeneration because the result didn't work, basically what this does is it does it already for you so now we can just hit send and then this will take some time to generate as you can see it's it's like diving into the mind to maze and decode then it comes up with a few notes about what it is generating it's basically running some kind of like I don't know what they use in the background, but it's using some kind of AI to detect what we actually want. So it will help you with getting better precision. So after some time, we got these two examples. The first one being is a draft. So this is the first one that it will do quickly. And then it judges itself if this is actually good enough. So if it is actually performing the task that you ask from it. And then once it thinks it has done a good job, it upscales this to HDR and now we have our HDR video which we can now download. I've got another example with you right here with a woman that is riding a bear through the forest. Now this first example was generated using Ray 3, the normal one, not the reasoning model. Now the second time I did this is I did this with the reasoning model. So here you can see, again, we have two different variations. This is the draft and this is the upscaled version. And it was actually checking if it has done a good job. And this will allow you to get better results because if it hasn't done a good job, it will generate another draft. And then you get like maybe three different drafts until it finally does a good job at getting exactly what you want. What I mean by that is take a look at this example on their website. So it has having a chain of thoughts. So it's like observing the scene is generating a first attempt and then it notices like the two like phones don't make sense so it's trying again now then it's making a second attempt and here it notices like we have two phones but they are too modern and it needs to be like old phones so then it's doing another draft and here we have two normal phones and now it has only one phone she's holding up to her face. So that's exactly how the reasoning model works. For more complex scenes, this might give you better results. I've got another example here with the bicycle ride. So it didn't do another generation because this first one was perfect already. So it just upscaled this to the HDR one and then we can use this one. So this one is a bit better because of the HDR and we can edit that further in our favorite editing program. Now let me be a bit more in depth about SDR and HDR because what exactly is SDR and HDR? So we have standard dynamic range or SDR which is a limited range of brightness and colors. HDR on the other hand is high dynamic range because it has more brighter looks and darker darks inside of their images which allows for more editing or more in-depth usage when you're color grading your footage. This is more for the advanced filmmakers because they actually color grade their footage. So the way this works is if you go over to the editor and then you upload your media so for example i got this video right here which is standard dynamic range and this already looks good but i can upscale this to hdr by clicking this button right here i can also even turn this into 4k hdr and now let's hit create and then we get this result Now, if I then put that result into my video editor and I tweak the brightness a little bit, 
then I get this one, which looks a lot richer and better compared to the original. The last feature that I want to share with you is called visual annotations. It's basically the ability to draw on your image to make it come to life in exactly the way you want it to. So for example, I have this image right here of a Naumachia. So this is a battle between two ships on a piece of water. So in this case, it's in the Colosseum of Rome. There are actually a lot of stories about that, which, which I love. Um, um, but enough on history, let me actually show you how you can make this. So we switch over to Ray 3, then over here this annotate button appears. So now once our image is loaded in, you can draw on this. So what I can do is I can switch over to the arrow, I can draw an arrow to go that side, I can draw another arrow to go that side, and then I can draw some arrows of like this guy moving forward, these guys moving that, that side, and now it is done. You can also make drawings like whatever you want to draw on it in my video right now it doesn't make sense i like to go with the arrows so now i hit done and then optionally you can add in your own prompt for this example i'm gonna say the boats face each other in a battle and now we're gonna hit send so it gave us this result and as you can see the boats that one is moving in that direction that one is moving in that direction the soldiers are also moving inwards. Basically with this, the movement is more on point because you have more control over what you want to have happen. Here are a few other examples of how Luma Labs uses this. So for example, this fish over here, it moves to the left side because it draws an arrow. Or what about this cow? You can even like draw what's gonna happen. So for example, a UFO and the cow is floating upwards. So if you want to try out Luma Labs Ray 3 for yourself, I will leave the link in the description down below. Other than that, if you want to see which of the AI video models is best, check out the video that's on the screen right now where I do a comparison between each and every video model. And I might have to update this because Luma just launched this feature, which is not included in that video.